it's really where we talk about things that we're just trying to make it out. Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Kim Ray, and you're watching another episode of Hashtag JTFIO or just trying to figure it out. And I am back to discuss a few things and I am tired. I am tired. But if you are new here, please subscribe um, to this podcast or to this YouTube channel. Like this video and share this video with all your friends. And always, as always, leave your comments down below so that I know um, how you feel about these topics. This is a podcast where we just try to figure out a litany of things, honey. Things be going down and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I got to talk to somebody. And so I hop on this podcast and we talk about the things and um, we just try to figure them out. And I mean, even like on the spot as we're talking, right? Um, so we got a couple things to discuss today. Um, I should be doing my homework, but I am recording a podcast because that's that's who I am. That's who we are. That's what we're doing. If you hear anything in the background, that is my dogs playing around no discipline. Um, but yeah. Okay. So, uh, y'all know this podcast is rooted in grounded in feminism and progression and equality and all of the things. And we just try to figure out all of these things from that scope, from that sense, from that, uh, realm, um, um, of rhetoric. So this week, uh, what's got my head in a tizzy or whatever is, um, Jonathan Majors. Okay. Jonathan Major's trial has started and uh, the headline says, you were supposed to be my Coretta Scott King, my Michelle Obama to the white lady. He has said that. Okay. So if you don't know, um, Jonathan Majors was flying high last year, honey. We were loving us some him. Okay. He had, um, he was on this like press run with Creed three with Michael B. Jordan. And he was on covers of magazines and the all pink. And he was combating all of those things with the, you know, people saying he was feminine because he had pink on in the way he was posing. And he was like, Hey, none of that defines my masculinity. Okay. And we was like, Oh, this is a woke King. We love him. We love it here. And he was in multiple projects and he was even starting to like dip his toe into the Marvel universe. And then this came out. Now they say, Sometimes when you're flying a little too high and you're blazing, blazing trails just a little bit too much, something happens to humble you. Um, and it's really unfortunate because, like I said, we was riding for the woke king and we still are like waiting for the details of this trial to come out. Stop. Um, because we're like, yo, did you really put hands on this lady? Are you serial? Um, so there's a few things to consider here, right? Yes, he's a celebrity. Yes, like uh, this is none of our business. We don't know none of them personally and blah, 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 woo, 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 right? But there's always this discussion about the white woman and the black male, right? How much of it is really believable? How much of it is some stuff where she putting 20 on 10 because she it, she's crying wolf, or she's over-exaggerating, or she's saying and doing the things just because he's a black man. Y'all know the story of Emmett Till. Y'all know how tragic that was. Y'all know this woman recently came out in the last five, 10 years saying that it never happened. Y'all know how brutal that was. So that being a thing, and then, you know, hearing about the captain of the football team and, you know, the the white girl cheerleader in high school, like y'all, this is a story that we have heard time and time and time and time again. So when you see this with celebrities, you start to raise an eyebrow and be like, oh, she's a white girl. Like, I don't know if I believe it too much. Right. But then also it's like, like Kanye told us when they get on, they leave us for a white girl. So it's like how much of this is really on the woman. And then there's the aspect of maybe this is true. Maybe this really happened. Maybe old boy really do got a temper and maybe he really did put hands on her. Maybe he was really screaming at her. Now, when you read the story, no, she didn't want to put him out there. And, you know, she tried to do what she can to save him from, you know, the public, uh, this coming out in the public, but he's a major superstar. So it was going to come out. Okay. Um, she does say that alcohol was involved. She does say that they both engaged and, you know, this is all rooting in infidelity. 
Okay. But the questions that I have that bring it back to home, bring it back to us are the following things that I'm just trying to figure out. Right. Um, when we see these red flags in our partner and we give them chances to kind of be fleshed out, um, we give them chances to try to under, be understanding and be empathetic and understand the context and stick around and see like how to, you know, how to move about just as a, as a unit. How long is we supposed to be staying through stuff like that? You know, because the moment you screaming at me, I was supposed to be your Coretta Scott King, your Michelle Obama. I am physically unable to be those things because it's just not in my lineage. Okay. I am a white woman. Okay. So that's the time when I would have had to pack my things and go. Now I understand, you know, he was saying all these things that were like seemingly suicidal and that he, you know, was going to hurt himself and all of these things where he's a celebrity and it is not your responsibility to stick around and uphold somebody else. Now I will tell you, these are lessons that I have recently learned. I have recently learned because it can begin to feel like it is your responsibility because this is your partner to uphold this person and to ride or essentially die behind this person. I want y'all to know that ride or die is dead. Okay. If it is not serving me and it is, if it's not healthy, if it's not fueling me, if it's not making me happy, making me feeling, feel loved or making me feel valued, I got to be out. Okay. I'm teaching y'all lessons as I'm learning them. And I want y'all to understand it's a hard lesson because when you become a part of a unit, you feel like, oh, it's all for one. And you, you be going hard all for one. And then you realize, nah, it's just the one. It's just the one that's for the one or the, for the all. And y'all, y'all know what I'm saying. Okay. So, you know, for her and not even just for her, because now he's with Megan Good and I'm kind of looking at Megan like, no, I don't think that, you know, how he was with the last one, he going to be with you. And no, I don't feel that he's damaged goods or anything and yes I feel like forgiveness can happen change can happen but it just like the optics honey the optics and you are a celebrity so it's like could you have kept this hush hush for a little bit is this just your friend that you're just consoling like while he goes through this but I just I don't know I don't know the question is when at first onset of the red flags what is your indicator or what is your kind of timeline that you're going to stick around in seeing these things through? How many red flags are you approving of? How many red flags of your own are you expecting others to be approving of, right? She said, the girl said that she drank or whatever, and, you know, they would get into it. Any To me, anybody throwing anything, like, I'm just, I'm not going to be a part of that. We not throwing stuff, bro. Like, the level of anger that you have to be at someone to be throwing things. I mean, it's just, it feels like antics. It honestly feels like antics. So anytime we tap into an antics bag, I got to take a step back to be like, yo, this is a lot for one person. And if the man want to cheat, girl, just go, just leave, just go, just go, just go. Okay. But I understand that all of these things are rooted in other things. Um, I had to understand recently my fear my own fear of abandonment right and it was interesting to me because I was like I feel like I'm the strong like I'd be strong honey I'd be like any anything about that like you ain't got to worry about me needing or wanting anybody bro but I realized as a Scorpio if I have put you in that place in my life, it is very hard for me to let you go, which is why it takes so long for me to put you in that place. Okay. So I think that how that transpires in relationships, the fear of abandonment is you do hold on to things a little bit longer than you normally would thinking like, oh, if I try this avenue, if I try that avenue, when really like if I was lost, if I was in a city somewhere and I was lost, I'm not finna just keep turning down streets till I figure it out, okay? Maybe if I got all the time in the world, but not when I have resources when I can figure out where to go quickly and get there and get and be on my way. It's the same thing with just yourself, right? I don't want us to think that we owe anybody anything to just sit around and just try to figure something out 
with a person 15 million ways. And every time you try to figure out you're hurting yourself, right? It's like continuing to poke or, or stab at yourself or prick at yourself for the betterment of someone else. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. So even though this, you know, Jonathan Major's case is, um, not our business and not a huge deal in our lives. I mean, I'm not throwing candles at nobody or checking nobody's phone to be like, are you cheating? Because I just, it's, it's above me, honey. Like if you got to do all that, you can honestly go. Um, but I want us to understand that in a lot of these situations, there are, these are like things that happen with people in life. And it just, I start to wonder, I mean, y'all just making all the noise. I start to wonder like, where do we position ourselves if you were in this situation, right? Okay, so um, Jonathan Majors, we gonna continue to watch, watch this trial and see how it goes down, honey. What I hope and what I pray, baby, is that you um, come out of this unscathed. What is that noise? Oh, the dryer. You come out of this unscathed um, and you know, you pay the fine or whatever it is, but if you put hands on this woman, you deserve to, to serve some time. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, and what I want for us as women is get out of these situations because these men, honey, and it, it just period, not even just men, women too, people with tempers, they don't need an excuse to put their hands on you. Okay. Whether it's over salt and pepper or, or over the kids and a custody battle, they don't need a reason. They don't need a reason. Okay. And Sometimes it's hard because you love this person, but I want us to love ourselves more. Love ourselves more, okay? All right, so Iman Shumpert. This is a couple that I'm like gritting my teeth over because, the, I mean, it let, let them tell it. They was pretty much the perfect couple. I mean, the way he delivered Junie and she was sitting on the toilet and she came out and they wrapped her umbilical cord with like some headphones and he's like crying on the phone and, you know, like they seem like homies. And um, I will say that it's one conversation to talk about like fatherhood. It's another conversation to talk about how he was as a husband. Honey, please chill. <laughs> Um, so that's two separate conversations. Okay. Um, obviously as a father, like he's been doing the things they have two daughters and Tiana does not discredit him at all. Um, in that regard. Okay. But as her husband, she says that he was very narcissistic and honestly couldn't stand it that she was in more of the limelight than he was, even with him being an NBA player, honey, with all the checks, um, he just couldn't stand it. So, um, what I'm just trying to figure out here, y'all, is what does what does a perfect relationship look like? What does a healthy relationship look like? I mean, so many things. I don't now. Tiana is a little rah rah, right? But I don't see her. I mean, I don't know her. But I will say that the image that they put out was that she was really cool, calm, and collected, really laid back. Like, Tiana Taylor is fine, 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 fine. Iman Shumper is fine, fine. But when they say even Beyonce got cheated on, like, it's a real thing. Like, looks ain't going to carry every time. They're not going to carry every time. Love ain't going to carry every time. Somebody Sometimes a person is really struggling internally. And here it sounds like... Iman was insecure. Yo, dogs, come here. Sit down. Seemed like Iman was insecure. And that came out as jealousy. That came out as... I just, I can't even, I, I just get so repulsed when I think about the fact that my success is causing you to feel a way about you. And I, I, the reason why it gets me so upset is because I've experienced it. You be going hard thinking that you're doing something for the betterment of y'all, of you as a unit. Meanwhile, your counterpart is getting more and more. And I don't want to say jealous because they probably don't start out as jealous. They probably don't start out as envious. They just start to feel challenged and start to feel like they need to be doing more. And that's fine at first. But then 
when they don't feel like they measure up, now it becomes a pissing contest. And now you're lashing out on me because you're not doing the things. When the bottom line should be the family unit. I don't see Tiana saying like, oh, I got this and you didn't. I don't see her saying that because most women don't do that. Most women be about the team aspect. Most women be like, what can I do for my man to help boost him up, to do all the things, right? And you be fully bought into this team thing. Meanwhile, he is over there looking at you like Judas was at the Last Supper, and I'm like, you know, so that's why they say like in a lot of these popular TikTok videos with the, the person is speaking and it's a slow-mo happening or, you know, or somebody with a podcast and their captions is all bolded and then they going in. That's why they say sometimes your worst enemy is the person that you laying with. It sucks. It's terrible to think about. And that's why we here trying to figure it out mm-hmm. because I don't know what becomes, come on, y'all got to chill. I don't know how that recipe even happens. You do the things, you date the person. I mean, by by the biblical standard, they did what they were supposed to do, right? I mean, they dated, they got together, they got married, had a baby, had two babies, got loving parents who are involved, got a family unit, got a village helping who um, they're also involved parents. But I'm telling y'all, there's a lot of things missing from the Bible that would really help here. That would really help here. Yes, the Bible's filled with a lot of parables and stories that we can like tie into what we have going on, but it's not going to tell you in there, hey, when, you know, when your wife got a video shoot where she going to be <laughs> on set with a bunch of men who find her desirable, you got to stay home and watch the two kids. Like it's not going to get that detailed, you know? So where is the, the checklist or honey, the, the guide on how we're supposed to navigate these things. And I don't, I don't want to be that girl that's just so afraid to experience life, but I just be like, sometimes I'd be like, why bother, bro? I'd be like, why bother? Because if success is going to intimidate you anyway, I'm not going to be unsuccessful because you're intimidated. So why have you around? Duh. And then if we are chasing success and I'm successful and you're successful, is that going to be enough for you? Are you now going to desire that I do something else that doesn't align with my own goals? Like it just, it's, it blows my mind to think, you know, of a person that you're doing life with being like, yeah, like what you doing ain't hitting on nothing, boo. And they like fully, like they're for real. I think that Tiana tried to conceal their identities by putting their initials. He then demanded that they use their real names. Now, I don't know, but I don't know why he would do that. Um, But she did say that he was very narcissistic. And I mean, what's, what is Iman's sign? Honey, please stop. Chill, 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 chill. What is Iman? Shumpert Zodiac <laughs> Um He is a cancer So cancers are very sensitive honey. But I mean The male ego is very sensitive period Okay yes black women are doing The things Um and we're finally being heard before so long we have, we were not heard. So yes, we're a little loud about it. Yes, we're we're a little like I'm about to go as hard as I can and do all that I can while I can and enough is not enough. Yes, I get it. But Tiana Taylor's living proof that sh- if she did not do that, would she even be out here like that? Kanye West dropped the ball on her album all them years ago. I mean, it had like four or five tracks released it all super late. Like it was a whole lot going on with that. Do y'all remember that? Like this girl has had to fight for her footing to the point where she just been starting her own stuff, funding her own stuff. And I'm telling y'all, it is turning my stomach to just think of this man hating on her. Now, obviously I don't have the full story, 
No, I don't. But it it just, I'm trying to figure it out. What is it going to take? What does it take? What is enough for you to be like, you know, that's my woman right there. She doing what needs to be done. She blazing trails. She's successful out here. I love her for that. I just don't know if I believe any of y'all when y'all say that. Because do y'all feel threatened? Because I can tell you plenty of many of many, plenty of many of many men who have shown that they have felt threatened by me in the workplace, various places. Or just because I spoke up just a little too quickly or just a little too loudly, it caused them to feel a way about their positioning. So what? And that brings me back to a part of Renaissance, the movie that just came out. Beyonce was saying that sometimes she feel like as a black woman, like people do stuff to her. Um, I don't remember the exact wording, but basically she was saying like, because she's a black woman, she, she has to prove herself a little bit more. Like they don't believe what she's saying. Cause she's a black woman. Like she's trying to explain to, um, some of the, some of her staff that she wants a specific lens, like a specific camera lens that has, that gives like a wide angle. Okay. And, um, the guy is like, Oh, we have this. And she's like, no, I want this. And He's like, yeah, we don't have that. She's like, I just Googled it and saw that it's a thing. So I want this. And it was kind of silent after that. But the dude went back and forth with her a few times and her demeanor is like, I'm going to choose to give this no tone, no attitude, no extra words, just be cut and dry with you and just give you straight facts of just letting you know, I Googled this. I saw it was a thing. I'm requesting it. We're not talking about money here. I'm telling you, I saw it. I want it for my show. This man went back and forth with her. And this is Beyonce. Now imagine black women, honey, stop. Imagine black women in spaces where we are not the richest in the room, where we are not the most, don't have the most credentials in the room. But what we're saying holds ground. What we're saying has merit. What we're saying is right. And we're still shunned, we're still silenced, we're still shushed. It's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling. So, <laughs> to know that you you get all that and you feel all that when you go on the outside where you have to be this loud, boisterous type, this strong type where you know it all, you, you got all the things, you know all the things. And then when you come home to your bed, you got to be the same way like I, I I feel like I keep saying the same thing because I just can't I can't believe it but I can believe it look I'm dropping the mic I can't believe it because I've dealt with it and I'm telling y'all it is of no fault I can't say of no no fault but it's there's not anything that Tiana could have done more or anybody in this situation could have done more because ultimately it is something where this person feels insecure. There's something where this person feels like they don't measure up. So all you can do is create space for that person to figure it out. And then you start to understand and start to try to wrap your mind around, should we even be married? Because even with going to therapy or speaking to your village and realizing, oh, this person wants something that I can't give. Actually, they need space to learn it. But now they're a father. Oh, and they're a celebrity. Oh, and they don't want to do it. How about they just don't want to do it? They don't understand or realize that it's a priority or a problem. And they don't want to do it. So, yeah, I got to go. But that was that was something that I'm like... Do you leave or do you wait for this person to get it because you made a commitment? I don't feel, I don't blame Tiana for leaving. She got two young girls and to hold on to something in hopes of somebody getting it right. When now she's an example and she has to teach these girls something. Yeah, it's a heavy load to bear. Now she could always say there are women out there who are like, I'm more about the family unit. I'm more about, you know, keeping my family together. So I'm willing to sacrifice, you know, moving on and finding someone else. I, instead, I will nurture this, this attribute, this characteristic in this person, give them the space, do all these things. 
And if the person is not abusive verbally, physically, mentally, spiritually, and they're not doing anything to harm you, and they really are in the gym, quote unquote, working it out, figuring it out, I say ride that thing out. To the love of my life, I'm going to ride it out with you. You know what I'm saying? But to a person who is using you as a proverbial punching bag, no, I can't. No, no, I don't approve of this message. No, 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 no. It does not feel good. It does not feel good. And at the very end of the day, if you don't feel good, at least once a day, you are not living. There's so much stress out here. There's so many things that cause us to feel just drained, drained. It starts, it makes you feel like, is this worth it? Not life, just like, is this job worth it? Living here, are these these bills worth it? Like, you know, there's so many things that can get you down. So the things that you choose to be a part of should be uplifting and things that energize you and make you feel like life is worth living. So when the person that you love is draining you for days on end, weeks on end, months on end with no type of no type of remorse, no type of empathy of understanding what that feels like or you know, none of that. I don't feel like you owe it to anyone to stay. No, I don't. So all that to say, um, I feel Tiana Taylor, do what you got to do for you and your kids, because I don't have any children, but I know that when you become a parent, you are like priority parent. That's your top priority, right? I always said that if I became a parent, I would be, um, I would take care of myself. And then, so I would be Kim Ray and then I would be like the mom, right? I say that, I said that, but I see how I am like with my students too. And I be going hard for them. Sometimes I'm like, I be like, no team, no sleep. I don't care. I ain't ate today. We driving to this basketball game. I don't care. I don't care. But it took me some years to realize, hey, no, like you, you might want to eat something or you're going to pass out at the game. You're not going to be your best, right? Um, yeah, y'all, I just wanted to come on here this week and just try to figure out just that. I mean, you know, I hear a lot of different things and um I do start to wonder because as I'm gearing up to be in another relationship or be with someone new I want to make sure that I'm not um presenting myself in a way that's flawed or broken or um bitter right um but there are things like that I want to figure out like I do have doubts about men just being able to be just trustworthy individuals for the long haul. Like, and I I think I feel like if you could be as down as Tiana Taylor, or if you could be as girly or feminine or, or sexy as Beyonce, or if you could be as understanding or communicative as whoever out there, like who is the perfect person who creates, you know, the perfect recipe for the perfect woman so that the man does not manify the situation. I don't know that they exist. And I think that the answer is your relationship is your relationship. And if you're going to be in love and if you're going to be in a relationship, you have to make it your own. You can't attach any of these other rules. And yes, I already know the answer, but that's not the point. The point is these people out here wilding. So somebody got to teach the youth. Because I literally was dealing with a situation today with my students where the girl said the dude was toxic. And he knew it, y'all. He knew it. And he was apologetic about it. But I still, my mind was just blown, honey. I'm like, not you choosing toxicity because that's what's hot out here. Because that's what Future said. NBA Youngboy said. Oh, God. Our future is in trouble. Anyway, I want to know what y'all think about these topics. Let's discuss it. Let's make it a series. Let's discuss it. I don't know. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I feel like even the strongest woman is weak for a man somewhere. Anyway, I'm Kim Ray. This has been hashtag JTFIO or just trying to figure it out. Make sure y'all let me know your thoughts. I'm out. I'm about to do my homework. That is past due. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
I can't with myself. <laughs>